relax. I just want to make a podcast. <laughs> okay. Hi, everyone. Welcome back for another episode of Around the Water Cooler with any DNR. Today, it's me, Tiffany, and Alexa, me. the angry ghost. Yes. <laughs> Alexa, as Alexa, the angry ghost, I am Tiffany. Tiffany. I feel like I look nice. <laughs> I actually really like your blonde hair. <laughs> Thank you so much. You should keep it. I should? I should yeah. just wear the wig to work? Yeah. Do, do you it. think people would have a problem with that? No. They'd be like, Devin, are you okay? And I'll be like, I'm Tiffany now. <laughs> don't, don't Who's Devin? Who is that? Who's Devin? I'm actually a Tiffany. Um, what's Chucky's last name? I'm Tiffany Chucky. His, <laughs> oh, his real name was like Charles something. I can't remember. I'm Tiffany Charles Chucky. <laughs> <laughs> so today we have a very, very fun episode of Around the Water Cooler with any DNR. It is Haunted Hydrology. Ooh. <laughs> we have been waiting to record this episode forever for, forever because <laughs> like i literally cannot think of something more fun to do than a episode specifically about haunted and scary lakes and rivers we're about it exactly <laughs> so <laughs> i can't like i don't even know like what your facial expressions i just i have no facial expression right now oh that's right you're a ghost like... i'm sorry i can't see oh, wait, wait, where'd no, you go i'm angry hello oh really <laughs> I have a bed sheet on. If anybody wants to know, it's a bed sheet with two holes cut out of it. So that's what Devin's looking at. So today we're going to be talking about a few different places in Nebraska that have haunted hydrology. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> um, yeah, so specifically today we're going to just be talking about the Indian Cave State Park. Lake McConaughey, the town that's underneath water. Harry Strunk Lake, the death ship of the North Platte River in Wyoming. And that's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a ton of different ghost towns that are in Nebraska, so they say. But this one's really special because it's within a state park, and you can go hiking within the state park and check out this ghost town. I went there once. Was it cool? It was flooded, so oh. I only went on a trail. I got so lost. it was kind of spooky. It was um, flooded, right? Well, we were inexperienced hikers, and um, we took a four-mile hike, but it was four miles one way. <laughs> My boyfriend was wearing sweatpants, and another girl was wearing pajam jams, <laughs> so <laughs> they only had three bottles of water, so it was really rough. That does sound spooky. I didn't even see any Indian caves. It there's was just, there's there is, one. But we couldn't see it because mm. it was flooded. Mm. Well, so I got lost. And I didn't see anything cool. We'll have trees. to go back. We'll have to go back and check these out. Yeah. I haven't been here. But um, anyways, so it's the former town of St. Deron. Deron? Deron? Deron. Deron. Yes. I can't roll my R's. Very good. <laughs> that was kind of spooky, like a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like spit. Sorry. <laughs> Okay. okay, so it's the former town of St. Diron. Um, that's a part of the Indian Cave State Park. And this town was charted in the 1800s, specifically 1854. And it was super healthy. It had a ferry that came in, so people would hop on and off the ferry into the town. Um, but as time went on, the river changed course, and the, rail, uh, the railroads didn't come into the town. So it began to wither away. Ooh. <laughs> So in the late 19th hundred um, and early 20th century, there was a series of really bad floods that sealed St. Deron's fate. Um, so it left the whole town abandoned. It cut off. Basically, just it just cut the town off. If you go to the Indian Cave State Park and there's like a trail that goes to this town, you can see like an old schoolhouse that they restored. There's a few other um, buildings. Um, there's a living history event show that they put on every once in a while that you can go. Um, there's also like another log cabin. They like tried to restore some of the buildings there to make it, you know, old timey. So it's super cool. But the coolest thing about this is that there are two cemeteries. Um, one of them is like marked with the people who are within the cemetery and the other one is just little bits of remains that they're not sure who's all there. Um, so oh that's kind gosh. of cool and spooky and creepy that it's an abandoned town. What the heck? It so unmarked like graves? Yeah, unmarked graves. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 
I just asking for trouble. You know, It'd some... be really cool to go there like now before Halloween. And... I went there and I didn't get any spooky vibes. It was just like a trail and I hated it because I got lost. <laughs> but <laughs> but now that I know that there are spooky vibes, I'm sure it'll have like a whole different like feel. Yeah, you're going to go back and be like, whoa. Whoa, this tree is haunted. There's well, there even if there is no spooky vibes, it would still be cool to go and check so out an history. old abound. Yeah, abandoned town. Check out the history. And yeah. I don't know, there's something about cemeteries that are peaceful. Oh my gosh, I have a joke for you. Let's hear it. Do you know what people say about, uh, or why is there a line to get into a cemetery? Because people are dying to get in. Oh my God. <laughs> I hate that so much. So the next spooky place in Nebraska is the tiny town of Lemoyne that's technically in Lake McConaughey. We went there, and that was actually really spooky. Yes. Um, so the town of uh, Lemoyne still exists today. It's on the north side of Lake McConaughey, but some people call it New Lemoyne because Old Lemoyne is in Lake McConaughey. That makes sense. So Lemoyne was founded in 1880 by Lemoyne Jacobs, and it was a stockyard, or it had a stockyard, a general store, a hotel, a barbershop, a school, and a bank. That was it. That's all you need. Yeah, really, except maybe like a bar. I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Maybe Alexa needs that today. I don't know. (laughs) And by the 1920s, the population had grown to around 200 people. So it was a pretty small town, but it's like pretty common for different towns in Nebraska. And in the 1930s, plans began to take shape for this new project. And the new project was the Kinsley Dam. So Lake McConaughey. The Kinsley Dam is the biggest dam that's here in Nebraska. And it's uh, 264 feet tall. Boom, from trivia. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think Alexa's okay. She just has water trivia in her mind. It lives I dream about water trivia. You so. can look at Nebraska from a map and you can see Lake McConaughey. It's a little blue dot, but that's how big the lake is. So you can see it from like satellite imagery. Yeah, that's crazy. So anyways, the Tri-County Association began making plans to relocate the town and the residents in 1937. But some people didn't want to move, so it took a while. And some buildings were just like completely demolished. And some buildings were moved like off their foundation. Like people were like, yo, I want to take my house with me. Like, let's go. I don't want this one to get wet. I just want to take it somewhere nice. And yeah. Dry. Yeah. So they moved it like just north of where old Lemoyne was. So new Lemoyne is Lemoyne, but old Lemoyne is what's underwater. They just moved it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so in 2004, there's a really bad drought in Lake McConaughey. Um, it was near record drought. And people were like walking around on the banks of the lake and they were like, what is this? What the heck? Yeah. And it was actually bits and pieces of. Of the remains of the original town, uh, which Devin and I went out maybe a couple weeks ago, and we saw some of these remains. There was like an old storm shelter you could like crawl in. There was a bunch of building foundations. Uh, yeah, there was like an old park bench that had been there forever. We have pictures of all of this, but this park bench was so like eroded away that like it was missing a seat. The wood was all cracked and. It was just really gross looking, but it was really cool. Yeah, it was super creepy. Um, And people have said that they found, like, bits of pottery. There's, like, tree stumps. Like, just random things. The remains of Lemoyne. Yeah, it was... If you've never been out there when the water's been low, you should definitely try and get out there now um, to see some of that because it's really cool to see these old buildings. It was really gross. Someone dug out the storm shelter to get in there and then Alexa went I totally crawled in there. It was so much fun. I, there was definitely mold and I was like, I should not be breathing this in. No, you got out relatively quickly. Yeah. So it's okay. But, I wish I was that brave. I wanted to, but I just stuck my flashlight in there and I'm like, there could be an animal in here right now and I have, would have no idea. So I didn't, but Alexa did. It was so much fun to go and check out and even just like walk around the banks of Lake McConaughey. Uh, Lake McConaughey is beautiful, so definitely check it out. But yeah, you can go visit New Lamont and old Lemoyne or the OG Lemoyne. It seems like the people of Lemoyne like a good party because when we went out there, they had some bonfires like ready to go. Oh my gosh, yeah. There was like huge, almost like teepees. Like it was like seven, eight foot logs just like stacked in a little pyramid Mm -hmm. that had like rope around it and like some other sticks and logs like inside that. So they were like about to have a huge bonfire. It looked pretty cool. 
Yeah, it, well, I mean, I mean, I wouldn't want to like you know be anywhere close to that because it's a drought. So like, you probably shouldn't be setting things on fire right now. But <laughs> um, to be fair, they did have their bonfire set out kind of like in the middle of where the lake used to be. So that's true. Yeah, just a lot of sand and dirty, muddy, round moss. So good luck. It was fun, but um, was fun. that is the story of Lemoyne being in or I guess under Lake McConaughey. Ooh. <laughs> so moving on we have another story it is called harry strunk lake um, dun, where this dun, place dun, dun, dun. Where this story takes place yes exactly dun 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 so this is about to get some true crimey vibes up in here so if you like that enjoy in 1973 harold noakes i'm just gonna give a quick synopsis harold noakes murdered edwin and wilma hoyt in the cook um, Noakes and his wife, Ina, were having an affair with Hoyt's daughter, Kay Hine. Ooh. Saucy. Sounds like drama. Yeah, it does sound like drama. So, and it does get a lot worse. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, um, drama. Yeah, menage a trois. How spicy. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, basically things went bad, as things do in relationships, and Noakes started blackmailing Hine. I mean, yeah, uh, that's weird. I don't know. Yeah, I thought you liked this chick, and now you're like, hey, don't, don't speak. I don't know what he blackmailed her with, necessarily, but yeah, blackmail is involved. So, Noakes went to her parents, the Hoyts, to talk about it, and when things went bad yet again, Noakes shot both of them, both of her parents. What? If, I don't know. I'm not Noakes. I don't, I don't make the rules. He just got mad, and he was like, I'm gonna solve this with violence, and he did. Basically, after he murdered them, he attempted to cover up his murder, and he dismembered them and put their body parts in Harry Strunk Lake um, near Cambridge. So, Whoa. yeah, what the heck, dude? What's it's your like problem? Making me think about, like, the John Wayne Gacy tapes or, like, yeah. the Dahmer stuff. Of, like, that's just so disgusting. How can you do that? Well, it's, like, literally all of these things that are going wrong in your life are, like, a result of your own actions. Yeah, seriously, you can't just be like, yeah, I'm gonna... Harold! Uh, I'm gonna have an affair, I'm gonna blackmail people, and then I'm gonna kill them and, like, just remember them. Like, not even what? them! Not even the, like, person you're blackmailing, you're gonna kill her parents? What's yeah, wrong with you? Stop! People are greedy. The spookiest part of the story is that the body parts ended up washing up on shore, and all were found... Except for one head. Could you imagine, like, being on the shore of Harry Strunk Lake and, like, having a picnic? And then you're like, yo, what's that? And it's, like, a foot. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's probably what people who found the body parts He did a like... really bad job of getting rid of those bodies. <laughs> like, they were found, except for a head. I hope he doesn't still have it. Did he go to jail? Probably. Harold went to jail, fun fact. I mean, you can't just, like, kill somebody and, like, dismember their body. And, and then like, everybody know about it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a dumb question. <laughs> <laughs> Is he, like, in jail? I guess I'm not sure. He's um, dead, yes. Actually. He was in jail and now he's dead. Good. Good. <laughs> Harold seems to have a lot of problems and they're, own, they're all his own fault. He brought it upon himself. Exactly. <laughs> I don't feel bad for you, Harry. I'm going to call you Harry now. <laughs> We're friends. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany and Harry. <laughs> The next one I'm super excited about, and we have Jeremy Gailey to thank for this one because he sent me a bunch of links to do some research on this. And if anyone wants, like, some links or um, our sources, like, just feel free to reach out. We have those. But the next story is the death ship of the North Platte River in Wyoming. But... <laughs> It's really close to Nebraska. Like, so uh, the place where the haunting is, um, it is between Torrington, Wyoming, which is right next to Scotts Bluff, and Alcova, which is central sort of Wyoming. Okay. I'm picturing it. Yeah. It's like right there. Basically, the story is, and I'm going to go through some different accounts of this because they all kind of vary a little bit, but basically a death ship rises out of mist that becomes a fog and people say that sails and the crew are covered in like a weird strange frost and the crew on board is always huddled over or around something which turns out to be a corpse of some sort in a varying fashion and as you get closer the crew steps back and reveals the identity of the person on the sheet and it's always somebody you know 
Okay. Um, I feel like this sounds like a premise of a movie that should be made if it's not. But also, if I saw, like, a ship that came out of, like, the mist and fog and, like, saw people hovered, like, around what it looked like a corpse. What is that? Go. Run yeah, away. I would not be like, all right, who's there? Like, who's it? What are you going to show me? I would boat? be like, nope. <laughs> not today. I'm super excited about what's on your boat. Show me. That's Absolutely not. <laughs> well, it's covered in frost. Get out of there. It seems not good. I would be like... It's I like have... mid-August and you see fog and frost. The, something is not adding up. Would have been like I had too much coffee today. <laughs> just like walk away. Not even run. Did just I? like walk away. <laughs> it's the sun. It's <laughs> You're, you're going to pass out. I would be like, all right. I'm either... I need more sugar. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, basically the website said, um, and this is a quote directly from the website. Again, I can provide the link, but it said water pouring from the Pathfinder Dam. The Pathfinder Dam um, is really close to Alcova on the North Platte River can stir up a lot of mist, but not enough to explain away the spine chilling sightings that have been reported for over a hundred years. Mm. This story is super old and it's crazy because there's a few accounts, but they're all within like 25 years or so. Oh, so does it like only happen every like 20, it's not like on like or something? No, not specifically. Like I think one of them was from so the first one was in 1862 and the next one was in like 1870 or something. And then oh. 25 years later another sighting occurred. But we'll get into that. Okay, okay. So, the first report of this death ship on the North Platte River um, was in 1862 by a trapper named Leon Weber. At first, all he saw was fog on the river. He was like, hey, that's a little weird. What's going on here? And he approached it, as one does when they're confused. Mm, nope. <laughs> Please don't. Nope. No. Um, Run, Leon. If you're on the North Platte and you see fog, you should probably just be like, maybe it's time to go. And I'm done here. <laughs> Um, so he approached the river and he was curious about the fog and then he threw a stone at it to break it up. I'd probably do the yeah. same and be like, what the? No, I, whoop. You know what? If I wouldn't walk away, I would throw rocks. <laughs> <laughs> I would throw rocks at a ship that was covered in frost. I'd be like, am I seeing things? Is this real? Is this for real? <laughs> After he threw the stone, um, the fog split a little bit and a sparkling frosted ship appeared to him. And the sailors aboard were also covered in frost, and they they appeared to be crowding around something laying on a sheet. Guess who he saw? His mom. His fiance. <gasps> His fiance. <laughs> and he was like, "Oh my gosh, I need to get out of here. I need to go check on her because that's weird. Why is she on this ship?" Because he was like pretty sure, like like, is this real? I don't know. I mean, am I dreaming it or is this like for real ghosts and stuff? Yeah, like what's happening. So he went home um, from trapping. Yeah, I mean, he was super concerned. He waited a month before he ran home. <laughs> um, but I guess, like, back in the olden days when you have, like, a job to do, like, you can't really just, like, leave and go, I need to shut Yeah, and there wasn't any phones or anything. can't just text your fiancé, like, yeah. hey, dude, you good? Facebook messages, like, what up? <laughs> Are you alive? <laughs> Yeah, so after he got home about a month later, he learned that his fiance had passed away on the same day that he had seen her on the ship. Ooh, so it could be that the ship killed her or she just died and then like, she appeared. Which one came first, the death or the ship? See, I was thinking about that. I'm like, is this an omen or is it like a, like, just a, like, hey, I'm saying hi, I'm dead now? Like, I don't know. I don't know. That's or tricky. is the sh ship like, I'm going to kill her later? Watch out. I hope I never find out. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> We're just going to avoid the Platte River from now on. <laughs> um, so, okay. Moving on. The next person to see this death ship was Gene Wilson. He was a cattleman, and he saw the ship in 1887. So... Gene was out there rounding up his herd near the river when his dog started barking and alerted him of the ship. Like, dogs, I feel like, are able to pick up on that energy. Yeah. But also, like, why is your dog able to, like, hey, dude, there's, like, a giant ship on the river approaching us. Maybe you should pay attention. Yeah, I feel like I would notice it. Or, like, you would see the fog or, like, feel something eerie or something, right? Right. I would I would hope so. I don't know. His dog was really into it, though. He was like, hey, dude, look, at, look over here. I found something. 
Um, so, um, so when he was on his horse, obviously he was running up his cattle. So he rode over to the river and his horse started freaking out. He refused to go near the riverbank. Like his horse was like, no, I am, I'm just about done if with you. If your dog's barking Jean. at it and your horse isn't going, you should probably just start around. Like maybe like, I don't know, Not bad today. vibes. Yeah, yeah. Like his horse was scared, didn't want to go up to the riverbank. The dog's freaking out. And once he caught his horse, cause his horse did end up getting away from him. He tied him up and then hiked back to the riverbank. Dumb. Jane. Come Jane, on, what buddy. are you doing? What the heck, Jane? This is a quote from Jane, so prepare yourselves. He said that what he saw set his nerves a tingle. Well, no, duh. <laughs> What an eloquent way of saying, I'm scared. <laughs> well, like, I was so scared. my dog was barking, the horse wouldn't come near it, but it was scary. Like, <laughs> okay, Gene. Gene. <Jean. laughs> For real. Come on, my guy. Um, So, yeah, he went up to the ship, which, why, again, I don't know. Um, And he said that the ship uh, appeared to be made out of frost, like before, and saw the crew reveal his wife on the canvas this mm. time. I know, so sad. And guess guess what? He raced home to find out that his home had burned to the ground and his wife lifeless on the ground a hundred yards away. Oh, I don't like that. See, that one seems a little like I didn't get any details about how his yeah, fiance did passed she, away. Like, well, did his did the wife burn in the home, or would the home just like burn and then she died? Like I don't know. Chicken See, or the egg. The first, exactly. The first story, we have no, like, details about how the fiancé passed away. But this story, like, it seems, like, a little malevolent. Like, it sounds like... It sounds like the ship did it. Yeah. Like, I mean, he did have fair warning, like, the dog and the horse, but he was like, no, let's I'm gonna go look at it. I don't know. I want to see what this sparkly ship is about. Bad vibes. (laughs) Um, so, again... Here is our next story. The last one that I'm going to talk about today is from a man named Victor Hebe. I don't know if I got his name pronunciation right, but just bear with me. Victor Hebe was cutting wood by his home that was on the river in 1912. After everything had been said and done, he kind of claimed that he had never heard of the stories prior to, um, like, his encounter with a death ship, which is really interesting. So, Victor was taking a smoke break from chopping wood, as one does, and he noticed a thick fog slowly approaching. Run! Run away, Victor! So, he said that the ship was covered in frost, and the sail blocked him from being able to fully see what the crew on board was surrounding and looking at. So, this one's a little different. He mentioned he could hear their voices and he alleged he could hear them say he was innocent and others saying that they were only carrying out their duty so they were like the cruise ship was like oh my gosh like i was just doing my job and the other one was saying oh my gosh he was innocent though so vibes are weird (laughs) so on the front deck he saw a man's body hanging from the gallows so this one's a lot this one's very different i mean he's not there's no body laying on a canvas it's just still a body Still a dead body, that is true. (laughs) Um, The deck was about 20 feet away at that point, and he could see his best friend hanging from these gallows. His friend, so it turns out back home, while um, Victor here was taking a smoke break and cutting wood, um, his friend had been tried and convicted of murder, and Hebe had felt that it was a wrongful conviction. Um, He thought his friend had escaped from prison, and... It turned out that he had actually been captured again and then hung the same day that he saw the ship. Trippy. Yeah, the ship is said to be seen in late fall and is seen about every 25 years. So kind of like what you were saying, it's not like on the dot, but it's kind of around that time. Though uh, there were no other accounts beyond 1912 of the ship. Well, I mean, if I saw the ship and somebody died, like, I don't know if I would come forward. I would be like, like people uh, probably think I'm crazy. <laughs> Nowadays, people would be like, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my Are you God. okay? Well, especially with the internet, like, I could just find this story. That's true. Somebody would be like, let's do You're... a podcast about it. <laughs> <laughs> like us, I approach them in my wig. What's up, I'm Tiffany. Yeah, so I don't know. Just real quick about Victor before I move on to give a synopsis of what this ghost ship is all about. That's so sad. Like, I don't know if he, his friend actually did or did not murder somebody, but to like find out that way, like a 
death ship comes up to you and is like, hey, your friend's dead. And you're like, no, he's not. And then you go and, check on him and he's and actually decade. dead. <laughs> like, yeah, that is really sad. That is really sad. I mean, yeah, all these stories are really sad and they're really eerie. Like, I don't know. I guess this is just your warning. Like, if you see a ship emerge from fog that appeared from nowhere on the river don't run, look at it run, run. unless you're really curious and you're just like unless you want to see die. somebody die well you don't see them die well, i guess that's true unless you want to see them somebody dead, dead already dead. who is gonna die or has already died correct not for me that's a, that's a hard <laughs> pass for alexa and angry alexa the ghost <laughs> Um, yeah, very spooky vibes. I don't think that that if you see a ship, you should look at it if it's not real. Anyways, you're probably not doing well. You should probably go take a nap. The ship is said to be seen in late fall and is seen about every 25 years. And it's mostly seen during the day, close to noon, fun fact. So like, Even not creepier. A, like, not only are you, like, not sure what you're seeing is real, but, like, you're, you're probably pretty, like good like you just woke up a few hours ago you're like, like should i eat lunch <laughs> is my blood sugar like dipping really bad like am i good and the answer is no if you see a death ship either way if it's a medical emergency or a real ghost you're not good um but yeah in all instances of the sighting the deaths of the people seen on the ship are said to occur on the same day so you see that nope. person dead they're gonna die that nope. day there's no escaping it um and back to the quote about the pathfinder dam so what is the science behind the strange fog can't be the pathfinder dam because a that's like kind of far away from alcova even so no amount of like force like that water could make to create that mist and fog it wouldn't travel that far but beyond that the water pouring from the pathfinder dam um that mist it can create a mist but it's not the same type of fog that people see in their reports it turns out that a little bit of research has been done on this so there might actually be some other reports that are like documented somewhere in an actual like research paper somewhere that you could probably find if you reached out to people but it turns out out that the Cheyenne Bureau of Psychological Research tracks any other reported sightings. So if you're really interested in mm-hmm. this and you want to know if there are any more, I'm not aware of any, but you can reach out to them and ask. And besides that, there are no other officially published. So the stories I told are published reports or filed reports since 1903, but there are rumored to be sightings of this death ship beyond that. If you have any other ones that you want to share with us next year, we are all game and you can come help us tell the tales. Yeah, it's just weird that, you know, these like normal bodies of water that you see are just like, they have either some really strange or dark history or just weird, wacky stories like a death ship. But yeah, so um, thank you guys for joining us for this spooky episode. It was a lot of fun, this one. We had a blast. I love doing research on weird things, and this one was definitely weird. So yeah, just remember. Next time you're by some water, it some, could be haunted. Some spooky water. Dun, dun, dun! dun. <laughs> <laughs> Bye! Bye!